connects us all to family, friends, culture, and traditions. I'm Brooke Brooke Charvet, a CEO, a television host, but most importantly, I'm a mother of four who knows that meaningful meals can last a lifetime. Now I'm a foodie, and I know that what happens in my kitchen keeps my family close. I'm Breaking Bread, some of Hollywood's best-loved celebrities take us into the kitchen to share the meals that bring meaning to their lives. And we'll walk down memory lane through the palate and stir up some of life's most flavorful memories. here and it's time to celebrate all the joy and blessings that we have in our lives and David and I pride ourselves this time of year with allowing friends and family to come in in hopes that they can share the same energy and love that we experience with our own family and today is really special for me because I have a very important couple and dear friends of ours that are coming over Roma Downey and Mark Burnett and you'll remember Roma from the hit series Touched by an Angel America fell in love with her and she has since become one of the most powerful producers in Hollywood she's made the Bible the Son of God the upcoming remake of Ben-Hur and she's done it with her husband husband and partner, Mark Burnett, who actually gave me my first job in Hollywood. He's created The Voice, The Apprentice, Survivor, and it's, there's a whole long list of credits. But most importantly, they're a lovely couple, they're dear friends, and I can't wait to share some family traditions and some delicious holiday food. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. I'm so glad you're here. It's so pretty. I'm baking some bread. I'm making fresh bread like my mom used to do when I was little. There's nothing better than the smell of fresh bread. And then maybe we'll take a little break and catch up over a cup of tea. Yeah, a cup of tea. Love it. I drink a lot of tea, but I don't know that I ever have the sentiment of the ritual that you really are familiar with. Oh, well, with. I was raised with tea. Everything always tasted better with a cup of tea oh. first. So the secret to a good cup of tea, Brooke, is making sure the water is really boiling hot. I never boil my water, <laughs> ever. If you're leaving that to sit to brew, because you want your tea to brew mm -hmm. a little bit, uh, sometimes it's useful to have a little tea cozy, which is quite this is cute. Funny. I I've seen or these, it could I also never know what they are. A strange show. Fashion. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Look at that. Oh, that's a strong brew. And do you still make time daily for this? Oh, yeah. I love to drink tea, but I love the ritual mm -hmm. of taking time for tea. And I think that so often grace. in the busyness, mm -hmm. we need to take a little space for grace. If you live your life comparing yourself to other people, there's always going to be somebody that has something that you think you would be happier always. with if you had it. By comparison, you can discourage yourself. Or if you compare yourself to people that you think you have more than them. Mm. You risk being prideful. Mm -hmm. But I think if you live your life just being grateful for what you've got, because gratitude is the key to happiness. There's another bit of advice that you gave me 10 years ago in the midst of going through my divorce. You gave me the book that you wrote, Love is a Family. Oh, you yeah. wrote a nice little message in it to me. And I took that book and I read that book over and over and over again. Do you remember the message of the book was that all families look different. Life can be depicted in so many different ways and it really is about the simple common denominator of love. Yeah. And that meant so much to me and that helped me tremendously. Well, I think we have to take care of each other, you know? The loss of my own mother mm. has sort of resonated throughout my life and it has made me value more sure. the friendships that I have. And I think that when we go through something, it can be such a, a learning you know, we growth. No, no growth comes without pain. As you know, for many years, I had the good fortune to play an angel yes. on television, and I worked with the fabulous, beautiful Della Reese. And she has been a mother to me all these years. And, you know, she took me into you. her arms when we first met, and she said, you know, baby, I just always knew that God brought me into your life because you needed a mother. And it was such a blessing for me. And then a few years into working on Touched by an Angel, tragically, Della's daughter passed away. And she said, you know, I just didn't realize that God was bringing you into my life because oh, wow. I was going to need a baby girl. So 
We've just That's been beautiful. in a cross. family ever since. Yeah, which is back to that thought that love is a family, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, when we're fortunate enough to have our own families around us and that we can nurture and love each other, but life brings other people Absolutely. into our worlds. And if you can keep your heart open, your kitchen open. Yes, huh? this is where all the magic happens yeah. and then it all comes back to this. So we both know that a holiday meal does not have to be fancy and elegant to be delicious. And as busy as we are, I like five minute, 10 minute recipes. Uh -huh. And one of our favorite restaurants in Paris is a place called Le Mie Louis. And it's a basic, simple roasted chicken. So this is one of my favorite dishes, favorite meals. And because my husband's French, he likes it really crispy and really golden brown. And it's really one of the most valuable things I've learned in the kitchen is all you need is olive oil, salt, and pepper. So if you wrap your chicken skin with the olive oil, then when you bake it, when you roast it, the skin will get nice and... Yeah, but I also make sure that it's dry. And I start out at 450, really hot, and I kind of brown it for 15 minutes, and then I turn it down to 350. And I'm gonna cook this for a good couple of hours. The longer, the better. I like the bones to be loose, and I like the meat to fall off. But it's honest to God, this simple. It's a lot of salt. I'm never afraid of salt. It's a lot of pepper. And one of the spices that's become really important is cumin, and I love this spice smell that. And I use cumin a lot. So we're like one minute and counting, right? A little mm -hmm. bit of rosemary for flavor. It's also a beautiful garnish. I don't even take the time to chop the garlic. I leave it just like this. A little bit of olive oil right here so it doesn't dry out. And one other trick that I learned, I sometimes I don't like the chicken to sit in its juices because I want it to be crispy. So I make a little bit of a bridge with the carrots. You create like, like a this. little platform exactly. for it? Look at that, five minutes. Golden, crispy, delicious. It's a simple country roasted chicken. It smells like home, it tastes like home for us. All right, I'm gonna pop that in. Well, something I brought over for later is something called the Christmas cracker. You know, I grew up in Ireland, as you know. My husband grew up in England and we didn't have a Thanksgiving holiday as such. Right. So all of the focus and the dynamic that Americans put into Thanksgiving, we put into Christmas. And I always wondered what these Christmas crackers are in the grocery store. We see them every season, but tell me the story behind them. Well, I brought some over with me today okay. so we can have them for dinner. But basically, you pull them with your neighbor at dinner, okay. and inside everyone has a bad joke. Oh, no. A, um, a paper hat and some kind of little toy, something to play with. But I tell you where they were at their best. At a dinner table where maybe you had that uncle that you only saw oh, once a year sure. and you had nothing to say to <laughs> kind him. Kind of breaks a, the ice. It was a real conversation breaker and everybody would read. The kids love to read out the corny joke and everybody looks silly in the paper hat. So I can't wait to do that because I see them every season and I've never purchased them. So that'll be great. You're going to teach me something. Yeah. So the other thing we should have to go with here, chicken, some vegetables. Right? I think so. Tell me about some of the dishes that you grew up with. Oh, well, you know, I think that um, just some nice roasted root vegetables, maybe. Love them. When I grew up, it wasn't like the cuisine capital of the world. And I think all of our vegetables ended up just being boiled to death. So if I've learned anything in my adult American life is the value of serving your vegetables just a little bit crispy. But and you I'm know, only it, laughing because it reminds me of my childhood where my father overcooked everything as well. So it was like a very basic meal of rice, a protein, and a really bad vegetable. <laughs> and the meat was often so overcooked and underflavored yeah. that it wasn't a decadent experience, but it was still a family experience. You know, we had a family dinner every night at five o'clock. So and, special. And I know your childhood was quite different than the life that you're living today with yeah. your children and Mark. Well, my mom passed away when I was just a little girl. So you were 10 years old? Yeah, I was just 10, Brooke, you know? And it was like somebody turned the lights out in our life, you know? And that meal that had been such a moment of laughter for the family became something quite different. So now we really put a lot of focus with our three kids on the family meal. We try to banish phones from the table. That's one of my favorite roles We in try this to house. turn the TV off so that we really just take the time to check in with each other. How was your day? Mm -hmm. How are you doing? It's great when you can combine that with good food, but sometimes it's just the experience of being together. And no matter what you're preparing, no matter how good you are, what kind of judgment you have of yourself as a cook, that kitchen is the center of a home. Mm -hmm. And that when there's laughter and joy 
in a home and that extra ingredient, you know, love. as you know, is loaf. Love. And you can weave that into everything. It's like you can pray it in to the food that you prepare. Should we get some vegetables? Going? Yeah, sure. All right, let's do it. So now we're going to make some roasted root vegetables. Perfect. That will really complement the chicken. We have some parsnips, okay. carrots, onion, uh, turnips, and celery roots. Colorful, I love and it. A few Brussels sprouts, which I know are an acquired taste. You mentioned that your husband likes his uh, chicken meat crispy. <laughs> if you can get a Brussels sprout into olive oil and get it into a really high oven, mm -hmm. it'll crisp the surface of it. And that seemed to be more and more popular now. So like roasted brown crispy uh -huh. Brussels sprouts are really yummy. Now also as an Irish woman, I couldn't be here and prepare vegetables and not make sure right. we had a few right. potatoes in there. We are the potato people. I love potatoes just about more than anything, and I do, never think that a meal is complete without a spot. That's my husband, too. He needs so, a little bit of carbs. Um, do you and Mark have similar tastes? We do. You know, we grew up in the same corner of the world. My husband is English. I'm Irish. I don't hold that against him. <laughs> <laughs> and when we first fell in love and I was in there cooking for him, it was all about the potato. I mashed them, I oh, fried I them, I sauteed <laughs> them, I baked them, I slathered them with butter. He just loved me, girlfriend. Oh did I much better you? than I did. I remember the first meal I made for David. It was a dry chicken breast, some bad beans and brown rice. And he was like, this is never going to work. That was before I discovered flavor and olive oil and really learned how to cook. And all I'm going to do here is toss this with your olive oil. Tell me when. All right, don't be and afraid then, of the olive oil. And then go on, you're not afraid of the salt, so you get your salt, salt in there. Okay. And then what you would do is just get your oven really, really hot, about 400, allow okay. it to heat up for a bit. We just we'll put these in the pan. Okay. And then in about the last half hour of the chicken going, we'll pop them in Oops. and they should be just right. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? It's gorgeous, oh, I love it. It's, it's like an Irish flag. Should we throw it in the pan? Yep. All right. Good. That's right. So should we pop these Let's in the it. oven? All right. Here we go. Thank you. Gorgeous. All right. Should we take a break? Yeah. I think it's wine time. A wee glass of wine. <laughs> Let's do it. To fruit chip. Hello, hello. Hey guys. Hi. Hello. Wow, look at you guys. Oh, you know, look at you guys. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. Mm. Where are you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm good. How are you? Hi, David. How are you? Awesome. We're good. What you got for us? <laughs> we uh, cooked up a masterpiece, we hope. Actually, I shouldn't brag yet until we taste it. <laughs> the marriage of two great recipes. Hope you're hungry. We are. I made, your, I made your crunchy French chicken. It's going to be nice and golden because, you know, Frenchy over here is <laughs> very particular Why about the chicken. Why is it always the French that always get blamed for everything? <laughs> David, come on, you're French. I mean, come I on, let's keep it real. And Roma? A big pan of roasted vegetables, roots, turnips, parsnips, potatoes. Potatoes. Right. And we talked potatoes. about the potatoes, potatoes, by the way. Potatoes. <laughs> and a few more spuds. Yeah. Yeah. The Irish girl does love her potatoes. She said that. And we talked about the yeah. carbs, because we know you guys have been hitting the gym pretty hard. So. Well, I love the potatoes, so I'm in. <laughs> it's so funny you mentioned the gym. Me and David hang out every single day I know. at the gym. So good. It's half, half workout, half gossip. To be honest. What about the competition <laughs> yeah. portion of it? That too. <laughs> <laughs> but how challenging is it for the two of you as a couple to bring it back to center? You know, we have loved the work that we've been able to do together. We believe in it. We're mm -hmm. passionate about it. We enjoy it. And we love each other. And if we weren't working together on these projects, we would spend so much time apart, wouldn't we? Yeah, because remember, part of our job are these foreign shoots. Mm -hmm. So which means you're going away for weeks on end. So we just end up doing it together. And for years and years and years, we took the kids on Survivor every shoot. That's right. And you know, we looked back, I was speaking to the kids the other day, and you know, that sometimes when they got into their teens, they complained about going away on Survivor locations because they had friends. And James and Karen said to me the other day, you know, that was a great childhood, like mm. being on those islands and making swords and spears and yeah. you know, hanging out. Sure, what at, an at, experience. Yeah, it, it was great fun. And you know, we look back on it, and Survivor definitely 
you know, it was a big part of our life, right? When we first uh, met and got together, Mark gave me a big, huge box as a birthday present. And I had been dropping hints for a really lovely pair of earrings <laughs> that I had my eye on. And I opened up this box and it was like um, air tanks and scuba diving gear and you know, all and kinds of- And I know you of... don't love the no, water. I don't even like to be wet. I'm like, I'm in the shower, like avoiding how I cannot yeah, I put my face in the water. And so now I'm a certified scuba diver. You did it. Uh, also our daughter Riley is, the boys of course, and we and would that go box, to- Roma actually thought it was one of those things where you get a giant box there's going to be another box, yeah, and a yeah, smaller yeah. box, and, and a, little, a little box of earrings. Yeah, yeah. She opened it, the first uh, she yeah. saw was fins and tanks. But, uh, I was uh, like, Mark's you, like, well, they're uh, at the bottom uh, of the uh, ocean, but first you have to dive she, down to the treasure box. She actually did it, though. I can't believe that you I mean, did honestly, that. that's the Listen, crazy thing. the man that's came out, love, right? honestly, it's like, and but there's just, there's a moment underwater where it's just so quiet. And I appreciate that, you know, I like a little bit of quiet. I think it's in the silence you that we... Me. <laughs> <laughs> My husband wakes up talking. He loves to talk. He's just I'm a sorry. talk. Thank talk. God he loves I'm to sorry. talk. <laughs> Thank God. We, we talked a little bit. That's why she likes scuba diving, so I can't talk. <laughs> you can't talk. And then, like, on the, oh, no, but here's the funny part. On the last trip, I bought these masks that you actually could speak to each other. And I thought it was a great oh, idea. No. And Rowan said, no. That's the worst idea ever. I it's was the one in thing there. about scuba diving is we turned, can't speak. I turned the volume down and they're all going, I don't think Roma can hear us. He was like, oh, she can't. And I was like, just turn the volume down. I can't believe you did that. That's amazing to step out of your comfort zone on that level because yeah, I know how you feel was. about the water. Well, you know, I have learned that courage isn't the absence of fear. Mm. Courage is having fear but still moving forward. And mm. it did. It really, it was very helpful for me to do that. And, it's something that we can all do together. Roman, do you think we should check on our feast? I think we should. I think it's about ready. Huh? We can go eat. So why don't you guys go out to the cabana food mm -hmm. and we'll meet you out there. Okay. And we'll break some bread oh, and have I, a great feast, being, yeah? I think we're being kicked out. <laughs> yes. Come on, David. All right. Cheers, David. The bread. There she is. Oh, oh, oh. With the hollow. And there is nothing better than homemade, fresh baked Look bread. At that. I'm this, in fact. And I've never had a meal with the two of you that you didn't bless with grace. So would let's, you do the honors? Yeah. And yes, let's do that. Please yeah. And uh, Absolutely. make it proper. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for our friendship, for the food, for our children and, and their health. And we're eternally grateful and we recognize how lucky we are in our lives. In your name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mark's been on a diet all week long, so this is like perfect. Roma, I love oh. the vegetables. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so good. Tell us about the crackers. Can you reach across, like you and I, Brooke. Okay, we do it okay. together? Yeah, we do okay. it together. We're just pulling? Yeah, we pull. Okay, so you won. It's like what? winning the wishbone. This is like the wishbone. And, and what's inside? Wait, hold on. Inside, you know, you're gonna have... Oh, oh. oh. So you never know what's inside, right? No, you don't know. You're so is this an Irish it. tradition, an English shot, tradition? You'll win one. You'll be a big baby otherwise. So this is my... I'll give you, um, I'll give you mine. I'll give you mine. Okay. Oh, just win. Just like at the gym. All right. So this is my cork for the bottle of wine that we're going to hey. drink. <laughs> Oh, that's it? Yeah. So you never oh, know bottle, what's inside. A bottle, a bottle of one. Yeah. So you ring. Okay. That's perfect for Mark. And a joke. What type of room has no windows or doors? Uh, a mushroom. Wow. Oh. <laughs> so these are the ice-breaking bad jokes at the family dinner tables. Okay. Really? Here's the level of my humor. Why was six afraid of seven? Because six, seven, eight. No, because seven, eight, nine. Oh gosh! Okay, wait, hold on. We're this gonna, is a perfect way to break this. This is the way that we end our, 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 you know, our reputations and stuff like that. <laughs> yes. The four of us are wearing silly crown hats. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So Hollywood has lost their mind. They've lost our mind. However, this is so normal in Scotland, Ireland, England. Oh yeah. Every family at Christmas are wearing these hats with these crackers, and I it's love like, it. what makes America great is this melting pot of cultures. Because if America didn't have the immigrant cultures, it wouldn't be America, would it? And now that you've shared that spice. tradition with us, 
you'll be able to find us at our next holiday dinner. But the kids love it because oh there's, there's jokes and there's like, little gifts in it. And kids love it. it. And whoever's going to pull and get the crack out, the other the big <laughs> half of it wins. That's right. And I didn't. Mm. I gave it to you, David. Unbelievable. David, don't, just don't go there. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's yeah. to friendship and <laughs> family. Right. Thank you so much for spending the holidays with yes, us. Yes, thank you. We love very, you guys. Very much. Love, love you, you too. We did good, huh? Yeah. We knocked it out. We knocked it out. We Look at our beautiful did. holiday. Mm. Uh, eat up, guys. We did better. <laughs> <laughs> we got them. Ah. I love you guys. I love it. I'm Charvet's coach.